I'm Jillian Beecham. I'm an emergency physician, medical toxicologist, and addiction specialist, and we're here today to give an update on how to use naloxone safely and effectively on the scene of an overdose. Why use naloxone? Well, there are 23 and a half million people in long-term recovery in the United States. And the reason to use naloxone is to give one of our community members a chance at long-term recovery. Naloxone enables breathing and saves a life, giving someone a chance to take that next step. My name is Don Sabo. I'm a sergeant with Salisbury Police Department and also a paramedic. Several years ago, we were all trained in naloxone use, whether you're a police officer, um, a first responder, a QRS agency, or a layperson. And over that course of time, uh, trends and treatment has changed. Um, not that we have done anything wrong. It was the training and the studies at the time that we were taught um, how to give the Narcan or naloxone. But what we are seeing is that um, the lower the dose uh, possible for recovery of the patient is better on the back end of their treatment. So what we're going to emphasize is um, when we start looking at our patients to give one dose, whether it's the two milligrams or four milligrams of naloxone, uh, wait five minutes, ventilate that patient if you have the ability with a bag valve mask or other device, and then give a second dose of naloxone. What we are trying to avoid are high doses of naloxone of 8, 12, 16 milligrams that have adverse reactions for patient care. Like with any scene, obviously the first thing we want to do is make sure the scene is safe. Um, obviously a lot of the times with overdoses there may be some paraphernalia, some drugs and other items left at the scene. Um, several police departments, including my own, have sharps containers in their police vehicles and it's very important that when you're on the scene of an overdose to make sure that all providers are safe uh, from any of the paraphernalia that may be on scene. So if you have any needles or paraphernalia that you see, obviously we want to put that in a sharps container. If you don't have access to a sharps container, uh, protect that area, protect those uh, pieces of paraphernalia, and once the ambulance arrives, they will have the um, sharps containers to dispose of the needles properly. I want to talk a little bit about white powders that you may come in contact on the scene, heroin, fentanyl. Um, our best precaution is universal precautions. Um, nitrile gloves. If you have a mask, you can certainly wear a mask, a regular um, uh, particulate mask or an N95. But we want to stress that unless that product becomes aerosolized and becomes an inhalation danger, um, contact to the skin alone does not necessarily mean that you're going to have adverse reactions uh, for yourself or other responders. So basic gloves, masks, and universal precautions along with proper um, hygiene after the call, soap and water, gels, uh, alcohol-based uh, solutions, should be proper for you to maintain health and safety on the scene. The question often comes into play, how do I know when to use, use Narcan or Naloxone and when to, I get, when to give it? So obviously, um, we a lot of times get dispatched to uh, either known overdoses or unknown medical problems where you may see the options or opportunity to um, have an unconscious patient. So obviously the first thing we're going to do is determine on responsiveness with the patient. And I have my mannequin here, you know, hey, hey, you okay? We're going to look for chest to rise and fall. I like to keep my hand on the person's chest so I can feel if their chest is rising and falling. We're going to check to see if they're breathing, and we can check for a pulse. A lot of times in overdoses, we will have a pulse, but the patient is not breathing. I can also look at other signs and symptoms on my patient. Uh, look at the pupils. Are the pupils pinpoint? Is there any respirations at all on my patient? Look around the patient on the scene, on the floor, at the patient's arms, at their legs, uh, anything that you can see. Do you see any drug paraphernalia? Do you see any drug items? Um, look at their nose, their mouth. Do you see any powder around their nose or mouth or any obvious signs? And another good thing is ask people that are around them, family members, friends, of history of drug abuse, um, drug addiction or other issues that may be plaguing the patient and look at the overall scene safety, look at your patient. Your patient is going to tell you a lot of uh, their signs and symptoms just by looking, touching and feeling your patient. When we talk about 
naloxone dosing, there are two types that at your disposal, depending on what grant you have or what is um, supplied by your department. Um, we have a two milligram uh, dose of naloxone that you actually have to put together. You pull off the yellow tab, the purple tab, we put it together, and then we have to attach an atomizer. This is two milligrams of naloxone, and how you give this uh, is consistent with the training that MOPEC provided for law enforcement officers and um, other classes uh, online training through the Department of Health is half the dose in one NARES, the other half in the, the other NARES. So it would be one milliliter um, in each nose. The other dosing that you're seeing now um, in schools um, provided by pharmacies and to the public and also to a lot of the um, police departments through the district attorney's office grant is four milliliters or four milligrams in 0.1 milliliter. Um, so this is one spray you just put up in the nose or the nares and squeeze once and that is giving four milligrams. So in essence, two milligrams with two sprays, one in each nair, four milligrams with one spray. So we are giving double the dose uh, with this um, naloxone. So what can I do in the meantime? A lot of police departments and QRS agencies have bag valve masks. So what I would do or want to do is take my bag valve mask, go to my patient, and provide quality ventilations. Nice and slow, every five to six seconds. Making sure that I'm not giving it too fast or too forcefully, watching for the chest to rise and fall, and waiting for that naloxone to take effect. What I want to avoid is giving multiple doses of naloxone repeatedly in quick sequence. So the five minute um, step is very important. And in Lehigh County, one of the um, areas that we're improving with the CAD system is that when the law enforcement officer, the QRS uh, squad, or anyone gives the naloxone, uh, a five minute timer will be initiated and the dispatcher will come back on the air and state when your five minutes is up to give another dose. What we're trying to do is avoid four milligrams, six milligrams, 12 milligrams, 16 milligrams being given in succession in a patient in a very short period of time. Our objective is not to wake the patient up and have them become combative or have patient care issues. Our objective is to have the person start breathing uh, on their own um, and reverse slowly the effects of the overdose. My name is Q. I'm a certified recovery specialist. Uh, outreach, my job is in the community. I also work for treatment trends. My role with law enforcement ride-alongs are solely for drug and alcohol purposes only. Uh, what we do when we go out for our ride-alongs is we are able to identify with the client that may have drug, alcohol related issues uh, and also referrals for mental health. Um, we like to meet the person right where they're at and also let them know that they're not alone in this uh, being that I myself comes from a drug and alcohol background so I can relate to how they're feeling and knowing how they feel and letting them know that they're not alone. My name is Emily Leonardo. I am a certified recovery specialist on an outreach team for Treatment Trends Center of Excellence in Allentown. I'm an addict in recovery. My clean date is July 29, 2016. My drug of choice was heroin and I am a three-time overdose survivor. So when we are out with first responders and we come across an individual who suffers from substance use disorder, we try to identify with the person. And for us, being in recovery, that level of identification is the substance abuse. For first responders, the conversation is a little bit different. And though a first responder can't identify with the substance abuse, we can identify with the feelings of hopelessness or the feelings of being down. Um, those feelings of negativity. 
So while being sensitive to the individual, whether you feel it or not, being sensitive in that moment of vulnerability on their part is really important. I think one of the best things that a first responder could do for an individual is to be knowledgeable of the resources in your specific area. So if someone says, I'm addicted to heroin, it's been this amount of time, I don't even know where to begin to know who's around. So for us in our local community, our law enforcement is very close with us. They know we're around. They have our cards. We can arrive on the scene if we're not on a ride along. And if the community that you work in doesn't have those resources, be knowledgeable about where a person can go, who they can speak to, and what the next step for them could be. And even if they don't want that information in the moment, to know it, down the line, it might save their life. As first responders and for myself and my partner who are on the front lines in the community, we understand that people be can become desensitized in a way um, that we see these things very often and a lot of the times we all feel a little bit of frustration. Why are you still using? Can't you get it together? These are things that we often hear and we discourage first responders from saying. As a three-time overdose survivor, one of the best things that I've ever heard was, you're going to be okay. There is still hope for you and at least you're alive. An individual may overdose over and over again throughout your entire career, but giving them the chance to breathe again so that they have the option at the very least to move into recovery is one of the most rewarding things that you can do for a person. And I am sure that there have been many times where a first responder has looked at me and said, why can't she just stop? Isn't this enough for her? Um, you almost died. Are you gonna do something different this time? I'm overall so grateful that even though it wasn't the first time that I was hit with naloxone or the second time or the third time, that eventually I was given the option to live my life again. And that's why we do what we do. I am a daughter. I am a mother. I'm a friend. I am an employable, responsible, productive member of society who's so ever grateful to be doing what I do. And sometimes we get lost in all the negativity. We need to understand that we are the reason that we keep going. Law enforcement and pre-hospital providers play a key role in addressing our crisis of substance use disorders by safely administering naloxone to enable an individual to breathe again so that recovery can be considered, by using naloxone safely by using the lowest dose possible and spacing those doses out at five minutes apart so that we can avoid excessive doses and precipitating withdrawal can help an individual feel more comfortable on scene with establishing care and linkage to treatment. Substance use disorder hijacks the brain and what happens in a hijacked brain is that that individual is driven to use substances initially for a high or euphoria, but over time just to prevent withdrawal. And when we give very high doses of naloxone in rapid succession, we throw a person into a severe withdrawal syndrome that makes it almost impossible for them to be able to consider going to the hospital and seeking care. So by providing naloxone non-judgmentally and safely, both for the individual and for our team on scene. So using scene safety, protecting ourselves and others by placing sharps in a sharps container, again, without judgment, and allowing that individual to make that decision to seek care. We can really change lives and give someone in our community the chance at long-term recovery. We're really grateful for the role that EMS, fire, and law enforcement play in addressing our crisis of substance use conditions.